There is a new push to make sure that every eligible ballot is counted in 2020. It's led by Stacey Abrams, the 2018 Democratic candidate for governor of Georgia. She lost to Republican Brian Kemp by less than 2 percent of the vote. Abrams says that voter suppression led to her defeat. The election was marred by widespread reports of irregularities. Her new organization, Fair Fight 2020, is working to ensure that all voters have access to the polls. The organization is bringing awareness and advocating for election reform at all levels. It's engaging in targeted voter registration and other voter outreach programs. And we're glad to say that Stacey Abrams joins us at the table this morning. Stacey, always good to see you. Thank you for having me. So, voter suppression would seem very personal to you, but when you look at what voters are interested and concerned about, it's not on their list of top three, top five, top ten. What is it that you want people to know? How can we, how can we make people understand why this is so important? Voter suppression is the baseline that determines whether your voice is heard, whether the values and the policies that you want ever come to fruition. We have to recognize that voter suppression is no longer the images from the 1960s or the laws of the 1960s that forbade voting for African Americans or the denial to Native Americans of citizenship until 1924. What we're talking about is whether you can register and stay on the rolls, whether you can cast your ballot, and whether your ballot is counted. And we have to think about that entire spectrum, because over the last 20 years, we have seen numerous laws prop propagated that have eroded your ability to do those things, especially if you're in a marginalized community, a community of color, or from a community that is seen as less valuable to yeah. the Republican Party. Because you they... say it's no longer hoses. It isn't. It's no longer hoses in the streets. It's much more insidious. Yeah. These laws look racially and facially neutral, meaning if you just talk about them in public, everyone thinks, oh, that's a great They're idea. Race-neutral, right. good. Yeah. But then you realize that, for example, in North Dakota, they passed a law saying you have to have a residential address on your driver's license. Most Native Americans do not have residential addresses because they live on reservations. Mm. Therefore, they disenfranchise thousands of Native Americans. We have to think about not only what the law says, but what the law does, and that's what we're trying to tackle. What do you say to people who say that voter ID laws or exact match policies are essentially protecting yeah. the election process. First of all, voter fraud is a myth. It does not exist. People aren't putting on, you know, fake mustaches trying to vote twice. But voter suppression is real. We know that voter ID laws seem of perfectly normal, but if you lived in Alabama when they passed their voter ID law, they also shut down two-thirds, I believe, of the organizations of the DMVs in black communities so that the very people who needed those IDs would not be able to get them. If you live in Indiana, where they moved your polling place in Hamilton County outside of the bounds of the city, if you didn't have a car, you couldn't get to vote. And so what we have to recognize is that, again, these things, these laws seem very basic, but the application and the implication is that your vote doesn't matter. And that's why fairfight2020.org is designed to go beyond registration. We focus on voter protection, mm -hmm. getting you on the rolls, making sure you can stay on the rolls, and making sure your ballot can be cast and counted. In, in discussing these issues, you've said that elections are, in effect, rigged, which is a word that President Trump has also used, and I see you nodding there. In using a word like rigged, I have to ask, it's a, it's a frightening word, and I wonder, does it contribute to a possible scenario where people on either side of an election outcome don't accept the results. There's a lot been, that's been made of the fact that I did not concede my election, but I never denied the legal sufficiency of that election. And that's the difference between me and Trump. He refuses to acknowledge the legal sufficiency or threatens not to. But my point is that the laws are wrong. We have to fix those laws because as long as we have eligible American citizens who cannot cast a ballot, then the game is rigged because in a democracy, you should be allowed to make your voice heard. And as long as there are rules that prevent that from happening, rules that should not exist, that's a problem for America. You mentioned not conceding the chair of the RNC, Rona McDaniel. You're smiling because I'm sure you've heard this I tweet have. yesterday. If Stacey Abrams actually cared about integrity of elections, she'd concede the Georgia governor's race that she lost by 55,000 votes. Instead, she's on national TV today still thinking she's won. Why haven't you conceded? Because concession means to say that the process was fair. But when I run an organization that in 10 days, between election night and the night I refuse to concede, we received more than 50,000 phone calls of people who were denied the right to vote, I am complicit if I say that that system is fair. I did not deny the legal sufficiency of the election. I am not claiming to be the governor of Georgia, despite what Breitbart and others like to say. Yeah. What I have said is that we won 
the battle of making sure more voices were heard because we had the highest record turnout in Georgia history for Democrats. But and your opponent was in charge of the my polling. opponent was yes. in charge of yes. the process. Yes. But the other thing to remember is, look, because there are more people in the water, that doesn't mean there are fewer sharks. OK, you can have higher turnout. But that doesn't diminish the fact that voter suppression is real and affecting people across the country. You're not running for president, you I said, am not. but you would consider a vice presidential candidacy. I would be honored to be considered. Has anybody reached out to you? Yeah. No one has had this conversation. I've, I've talked to them about making certain that we fight voter suppression and that Georgia is a battleground state. And those are two critical pieces for me because Georgia has the highest percentage of African-American voters in a battleground state and we can help take the presidency. And that's why we're in the 20 battleground states across this country. Is there any you, candidate you, that you're looking at? And would you, would you run with any of them? Yeah. I would be honored to be considered for the vice presidency by the nominee, but it is presumptuous for me to think that they're looking at me. What I want everyone to look at is voter suppression, and that's why during the primary, while our candidates are running for president, I'm going to be running to make certain that we are putting voter protection teams in our 20 battleground states Who? and that we're ready for the November Stacey election. Abrams, thank you very much for being with us this morning. Thank you.